Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson, and I'm here to guide you in everything you need to know about gemstones. Today, we're going to get a little practical. One of the many things that I do as a gemologist and gem dealer here in Bangkok, one of the centers of colored stones worldwide, is I source natural gemstones for people. Some of my clients include people that buy gold jewelry at vintage or estate sales, and oftentimes those stones are either artificial, glass, or just ugly. So we will take those mountings, we'll pop out the old stone, and we'll put in something natural and new. Now this can be a great adventure, and it can also be incredibly challenging, depending on what the setting is. And I have right here one of the rings that I've been working on. I realized this was a perfect teaching moment for all of you. It's perfect because this is a bezel setting, which means that it's got a collar of metal that's pushed around the stone to hold it in place. But the difficulty with this type of bezel is two things. It's a rather heavy bezel, which means it can't be pushed over that much and therefore the stone is going to have to fit quite snugly in the setting, otherwise it's going to jiggle around or just pop out. And that's terrible for everybody. The other thing is, as you look at this stone in profile, you'll see that the bezel wall dips down. If the dome is too low and the angles are too extreme, we just won't be able to fit the stone in here. So once we've analyzed the challenges of the piece of jewelry itself, then we need to think about what stone do we want to put in there. And this is where it's fun for a lot of people. People go off on their grand adventures in their mind going, ooh, I want an emerald, I want tanzanite, I want this, I want that. And I'm glad that you can dream. Dreaming is important. However, this brings us back to one of the most unpleasant questions that everybody has to ask, both themselves and the people that they're working with. What's your budget? I hate this question because when I'm asked this question as a buyer, oftentimes it makes me feel, you trying to pull the wool over my eyes, boy? Or madam? Because realistically, if somebody's trying to sell you a stone and they ask you, how much do you want to spend, then obviously they could inflate the price of their goods just to match your budget, right? And that's a reasonable fear. So I don't tell everybody exactly what my budget is. However, you need to know what your budget is. And that is because if you don't know what your budget is and what you're prepared to spend on the stone, then there's no way that you can shop for a gemstone. And that is a truth that I will lay out here, because there are gemstones that cost cents on the dollar per carat, and then there are other gemstones that cost millions of dollars per carat. So if you don't even have a general mindscape of what you want to spend for the entire stone, then how can you go about looking for a stone for this ring? Now, to an untrained eye, if you're just looking at the ring and you go, hmm, yes, well, that, that looks like a good-sized ring, it doesn't even cross your mind that this is going to be a rather heavy stone. And if you remember in our video on carat weight, then you will also remember that carat weight is basically a multiplier of the price. You take the price rate and then multiply it by how many carats you've got. Carat is the weight of the stone. So if you've got a two carat stone, you take that rate and multiply it by two. If you've got a 15 carat stone, even something that sounds inexpensive gets expensive quite quickly. And so I bring that up as today's teachable point and life hack if you're going to go about looking for stones for a set piece of jewelry then my first suggestion is to go out and find a stone that fits this roughly. If it's pretty close, that's okay. It doesn't need to fit perfectly right now. And then find the weight of that stone. If you know that this stone almost fits, then you can have a general idea of what the carat weight of a similar stone is going to be. But then you need to pay attention to the specific gravity of the stone. If you remember in this video on specific gravity, you will know that specific gravity is basically the density of the stone. Some stones are lighter and some stones are heavier for a given size. So if we compare corundum, ruby and sapphire, and then we compare beryl or emerald, aquamarine, heliodor, goshenite, there's a lot of names for beryl. These two have very different specific gravities. Corundum is about a four most of the time, and then beryl is something like two and a half if I remember correctly. Numbers are not my strong suit. But four and two and a half, you're talking about almost double the weight. And that is relevant because it will help you to get an idea of, for a given size of stone, how many carats do you expect will be the stone that you choose for this ring? So if I'm looking at something like corundum, and we know that it's 15 carats, but I decide to go with something like emerald for this ring, then I know that I will be looking at probably 40% less carats, and I can think about my price and my budget. Will this stone fit my budget, or do I need to look at a completely different stone? So one of the stones that fit this ring, that I also thought was quite attractive, and I ended up buying for it, was a piece of tanzanite. Now, tanzanite has a pretty middle-of-the-road specific gravity. So I know that if a 15 carat tanzanite fits this setting, then I can go around and look for most other gemstones and it's going to be a comparable weight. So I can ask prices of each of the dealers and decide, does this fit my budget or do I need to be looking for a different stone material? Something like corundum that has an SG of four is going to be very heavy. It's gonna be heavier than that 15 carats. I may be looking at something closer to 20 carats. What price per carat can I accept and still fit within my budget? 
I know that for this project, there's no way that corundum in an okay quality is going to fit what I am willing to spend. So I just rule out corundum and say, some other day, chief. That's okay, we can live with it. So specific gravity is your friend. It will help give you some metrics to know, does a stone fit inside of your budget or does it not? So the whole process from start to finish is go find any stone that fits your setting, find out the weight of that stone, and then go online and Google that stone specific gravity. Some people in the gem trade will call it SG, but specific gravity is what Google's gonna know. They don't know what SG is. There's too many acronyms in the world. Tanzanite specific gravity, specific gravity of Tanzanite. And then you compare that number with the other types of gem materials that you would be looking for. That will help you to know the weight of this stone for its size, what's that going to compare with in the gem material that I'm looking for. If I'm looking for emeralds, maybe I can get away with a lighter stone for the same size, because it has a lower specific gravity. If I'm looking at something heavier with a higher specific gravity, like corundum, I know that I'm gonna have to look at more carrots. And then when I have a pretty clear idea of how many carrots is going to fit in my setting, then I can multiply that by prices that I can go and source from the market. That's what I've got for today. If you'd like to get in touch with me directly, or if you'd like to read more about investing in gemstones and gemology, please head over to gemshepherd.com. Otherwise, I will ask you to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, tell all of your friends about me, and until next time, bye bye